to show you how to preserve the skins of birds and mammals. Uh, birds and mammals, you treat them pretty much in exactly the same way. So, first of all, you find the sternum. So it's, it's this bit here. Which bit? That bit. Okay. The little knobbly bit, and you start from there. I'm going to take it right up to the beak like that. Mm -hmm. Any animal that you're going to take the skin off like this is you're going to just take it right up and right to there and then you basically take it off. It's just like peeling off, peeling off a jacket. Being very careful not to put holes in the skin because we want to keep this skin, we want to make something beautiful out of it. I know looking at this bird like this it's hard to imagine it being beautiful again but I'll show you something in a little while that might change your mind. People don't often deal with death. It's a taboo subject. People just brush it under the carpet, talk about it when it's too late. Whereas as a meat eater I think it really benefits one to see the process through from beginning to end. Gives you much more of a respect for the animal, especially respect for eating meat. It's important to uh, get all the meat and any fat off the skin because that's what can rot and spoil skin. All these bits of the feather that you can see that are still attached to the skin, you need to be very careful and not cut those. You just keep moving over the bird until you get to the tail. Then the last thing to work around is the uh, gut sac. Voila, you have a beautiful little bird skin ready for preservation. So and you basically just undress it like that. So what, what do you do with that? What, okay. what do you want that for? I'll preserve it. At the moment I'm not quite sure what I'm going to make with it. Usually that comes after. I never know what to expect. I, ne I never know what I'm going to find. I'm an opportunist. For something like a bird, I'm just going to use salt. Cover all exposed bits of skin. So the salt here stops the rotting process. It cures the skin. It stops it from going anywhere else. A salted skin can be stored for years. When you need to work it again, you might want to start rehydrating it. So as well as using the magpie breast to eat, uh, I'm also going to use uh, other parts of the animals to make jewellery or something out of. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the legs off. You do jewellery with the legs? Yeah. I save various bits and pieces, like I have um, a, a jar of legs, a jar of beaks, skulls, and um, I'll think of things. I mean, like this would make a beautiful headdress. This may seem such a gruesome thing to do for a lot of people, but you know, we are so distanced from our food when you buy it in a supermarket, already prepared, wrapped in neat plastic, shrunk wrapped, and you know, and how many people actually do this? You, you have a a much deeper association with food when you have to deal with it from beginning to end. Um, you respect meat much, much more. You don't take it for granted and you want to eat it as fresh and as wild as possible. I do anyway. When you mention taxidermy to people, they instantly think that it's about stuffing an animal and creating the shape that it was before it died. And it isn't that at all. Taxidermy, it means to move skin. Taxi to move, dermy, skin. And that's all it means. So you can make it look like anything you want it to when it's prepared and finished, but um, not necessarily stuffed. So each of these feathers can be sewn individually onto some lovely vintage ribbon. And once you have lots and lots of these strings, you can use them to trim clothing. Tribal armbands. Mm -hmm. They can decorate the trim of the top. 
different birds have different plumages. For example, the, your English male pheasant is the most extraordinary, beautiful animal. You know, all, all these lovely, lovely feathers. And this again has been salted, but it just means that you can keep it for years in this condition and use the feathers as and when you want to. So again, so once you've done all this, can you really make something absolutely stunning out of feathers? And yes, you can. This is something that I made. It took a few years to make. But this, again, is just pheasant. Just a standard pheasant, all sewn by hand.